So elastic potential energy, often we're looking at springs which might be extended or maybe even compressed. And I've got another worksheet looking at springs and the spring constant that you can have a go at. So the first one, um, I've just written this out. So look, there's lots of E's. We've got big E with a little e to represent our elastic potential energy. We've got E to be the extension, but sometimes um, other exam boards might use the value of x to be extension or even delta L. So just check um, with whichever exam board you're studying, but I'm going to use E for the extension. And spring constant K is measured in newtons per meter. So for the first one, all I did was I took the equation, I put the numbers in to find these values here to three significant figures. And actually what we find is just a bit like kinetic energy. If you double the spring constant, you double the energy stored. But if you double the extension, there's four times as much energy stored within that. And we can see that from the numbers over here. Then we've rearranged the equation. This one here gets a little bit more tricky, but effectively let's say this is our um, EE is a half KE squared. I'm going to double both sides to make two EE is equal to KE squared. I'm going to divide both sides by K. So 2EE over K is equal to E squared. And then if I square root both sides, we'd have the square root of E squared. And we'd also have the square root of this. And the square root of E times E is just equal to E. And what we can then do is just put the E on the left hand side. Just gonna get rid of that to make it neater. And that's why this is a way to rearrange that equation. And over here, um, all of our values are going to be given to two significant figures, like the raw data in the table. All I've done is I've selected the right equation, put the numbers in. That's my answer I got on my calculator, which I've then put to two significant figures over here. On the other side, um, we've got some questions about um, maybe a bird feeder, where as a bird sits on the bird feeder, it extends. The extension is not the length, so it says here, the spring extends to 17 centimetres when initially it was at 12. So the extension is five centimetres, which is 0 0.0500 metres. I've, I've given that to three significant figures like the raw data. And that means when it comes to working out the potential energy um, stored in the elastic store, it's 0 0.161 joules. And then all I've done is for this one over here, I've worked out the extension of the spring, and then I've added that to the original length, which was 12 centimetres, to get the final length is about 14.5 centimetres, so, so 0 0.145 metres. Don't forget to add your extension to the original length. Number six, we've now got a different spring, um, and this one is a spring being compressed. Even though it's compressed, which means it's made shorter, we're gonna use the same equation. So again, this is the equation, that's the data from in the question, which I've put in to get a value of 0 0.022 joules. I've then used this value over here in the next bit of the calculation, so not my rounded down answer, but I'm gonna use my raw data from the calculator to work out the spring constant of the new spring is 48 newtons per meter. And then I've used again this value here, over here to work out the compression is about 4.2 centimeters. And finally, we're not just dealing with springs the whole time, we're gonna approximate this, um, the behavior of a jelly, um, a jelly worm or a jelly snake, um, or a gummy snake, sorry. We're gonna say that behaves a bit like a spring and if it's pulled to twice its original length, it then stores 0 0.68 joules of energy. So that one there, uh, hopefully um, made sense. So that's looking at elastic potential energy. And I've got another worksheet about springs that will also be really, really useful for you to have a go at.